perceive, believe, achieve. This is former UFC middleweight champion of the world, Michael Bisping. Paddy the Baddy here. You're listening to Combat Sports UK. And you're watching Combat Sports UK. So awesome to be chatting with my next guest, Kevin Natividad, who's going to be taking on Ricky Tercios. UFC fight night, November 19th. It's right around the corner. Kevin, how are you? I'm doing good, man. Uh, it's great to talk to you again, man. Yeah, it's, it's, it's great to chat with you as well, man. Uh, really awesome to see you back in action. We haven't seen you since uh, April of 2021. I know you've been dealing with some injuries. Uh, for those who might not be aware, what have you been dealing with over this last bit? So uh, I want to say my last like uh, three fights in a row, I've been dealing with like a really bad, I don't even know how to describe it. Like to ease it up or to simplify it, it's like, tennis elbow and like golfer's elbow at once so like um if i'm in my stance here the closest i could bring my face was at like a little bit past this 90 degree angle like wow. to my left okay. arm so i couldn't even do this which i obviously can now so that'll be a big help <laughs> for a lot of things you know get, uh, not getting punched in the face uh for this next coming fight because that was That's a cool. big yeah I could barely even jab. That's how bad it was. That's crazy, man. So did you like, did you go to the PI or anything or who did you work with that figured this out? So you're, you know, working normally again, right? Well, uh, I want to say, uh, there were a lot of like speculations. Uh, everyone was saying bone chips and, uh, they were definitely right. There was bone chips. So, uh, I talked to everyone at the PI. I talked to some of the guys out here in Arizona and uh they ended up finding when i did an mri they found 17 loose bone chips or that was actually when they did the surgery uh they had 17 loose bone chips uh in my elbow and then uh they had to repair some tendons and they did like a full nerve reconstruction all on that all on the elbow yeah so it was it was pretty bad Physically, I know you get injuries all the time, but but how tough has this last you know year and a bit been mentally? Just not being able to fight and dealing with these injuries and maybe not having the answers right away that you want. How difficult has that been? Honestly, at first it was pretty rough, you know, because like I felt like, especially the way how I went into my last fight, I didn't get to show anybody like um, what I've been working on, who the kind of fighter that I am now or that I was back then. And um, it was disappointing, especially the fact that I had to take so long off, you know? So there were a lot of like thoughts of me, like wishing it could go different and whatnot. And uh, my psychologist talked me through it. My wife talked me through it. A lot of bunch, bunch of my friends, it was in the past, you know? So yeah. the next, I mean, the only thing we can do really is uh, control what we do next. So that's literally what I did. Um, I focused on what could I do better since my arm and once my arm was able to recover and I could train again, I was like, what can I, uh, you know, how, like, how can I break the bad habit of me dropping my hands? How, um, you know, uh, what can I do to improve my jab, my footwork, like uh, my wrestling, jujitsu, like, you know, all all, all that stuff. And then um, what, what helped out is, um, I did like half of my camp for my last fight over at Fight Ready. Oh, cool. And um, I did the other half down here at Arizona Combat Sports. So nice. um, being that I was only half and half, I didn't have like the full training that I could have at Fight Ready. Like we mostly just sparred and then I went live wrestling days. But uh, now I'm like fully a part of that program, you know? Um, they have a strength and conditioning coach. They got PT over there, guys to help me out with that. I even got a nutritionist over there to help me with my weight cut. Um, uh, the whole program up at Fight Ready is like it's so scientific. You know, you guys have probably heard that, like uh, Joe Rogan podcast. They always talk about how scientific the training is at Fight Ready, and it really is. Um, I feel like I've learned a lot, and uh, me not being able to show the kind of fighter that I was the last fight i feel like it's even more this fight so it's not depressing it's more exciting now if that makes sense like oh totally get it anyone anyone doing their research on me from my last like actually almost all my pro fights they're gonna get the they're gonna get the wrong tape 
on the wrong fighter basically is how i feel cool all right man well let's say hey, glad to hear everything's going well uh this camp and you know <laughs> probably the confidence has gone up too just you know knowing that you fixed not only the injuries but you got a really structured camp and and everything else and and what an opponent to fight uh ricky tercio it's obviously a lot of momentum for him with uh i know he's coming off the loss but just the fact that he uh you know was on the ultimate fighter um mm -hmm. just stylistically how are you looking at this fight between the two of you he's he's definitely uh He's definitely a fighter, you know, like he's, he's a, I don't know how to describe how he is. Like, I feel like he doesn't, I mean, he, he's trying to fight, you know, but at the same time, I feel like he's not trying to, well, I can't say he's not trying to set things up. He's, he seems so wild and awkward, which a lot of people would probably either uh, stray away from, not engage as much, or like, you know, they, they like get too reckless or whatnot. He kicks, I mean, just based on his last couple of fights, like, um, I think he's just awkward, man. Um, okay. I think he's, especially since he like cooled, he kind of like lowered the pace a little bit in the beginning of his last fight. I think he's going to try to pick it up early. You know, he's going to try to turn up the pace a little bit, try to press. And uh, I'm ready for that. And if he's like, wants to be a little slow, start off slow or you know try to faint his way in with the clap faints and whatever like you know just try to throw off my rhythm i'm ready for that too um even if he wants to try to like if he wants to try to wrestle me like take down defense over our fight ready i think is like top notch and i don't know just my distance and everything uh throughout this camp I feel like it's improved a lot and I feel like he kind of has like a weird sense of his distance, you know? So, okay. um, basically what I'm trying to say is, uh, I feel like I'm ready for all and yeah. everything that he's, he's going to bring to the, to the fight. Um, training partners, who are some of the main guys that have been helping you get ready for this fight? Um, some of the main guys, like, uh, speaking of like, uh, unorthodox fighters. Uh, there's this guy over at uh, Fire Ready. His name is Paris Stanford. He's a uh, really, really a uh, awkward style, but like he's able to mimic a lot of what um, Ricky's done. Like he's a he's watched a lot of his tape, so he like watches how Ricky fights. And uh, I got another kickboxer from Israel. Like he's been uh, his name's Aton. Uh, he's been like helping me out a lot. And then my Mongolian buddies. Uh, Alatang Haley, uh, we call him AQ, but uh, <laughs> I think his name is like Arichi Lang. Arichi Lang. Yeah, yeah, Richie, yeah, yeah. I know him. I've actually interviewed yeah. him before. He's a really cool dude. Really, really cool guy. Uh, funny. Like they're all funny. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, I love working with him. And then, uh, funny enough, the last guy that I trained with, um, or the last guy I fought, he trains with us now. Um, uh, Dana. Yeah. That, yeah, Dana. I can't say his last name. I, I can't either. That's why I was kind of hoping you would say it, and then uh, neither <laughs> of us would look bad. But it's all good. We know what we're talking about, though. Of course. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Him and a lot of, I mean, Hunter Azur, uh, Casey yeah. Tanner, and my brother, of course. Um, honestly, it's great having such high-level guys like help and surround me, and even like uh, Henry every now and then, like both Henry Corrales and Henry Cejudo. They'll tell me, they'll give me like their two cents on ideas, like what they feel like I should do. Uh, we implement it. We talk to Santino DeFranco and Eddie Cha. And, uh, you know, we kind of just see what works best for me. And then we end up putting it into the game plan. Um, you talked about working with the nutritionist. How is the weight cut going ahead of the fight, especially being off this long? I guess everything's probably good if you have someone that's actually monitoring that, right? Yes, uh, really good, actually. Um, funny enough, the last fight, I started my weight cut at 151. Okay. on fight week um i'm i've never missed weight uh professional in ami i've even fought at 25 a couple times uh i've never missed weight in like 26 fights and i've made weight more than i've actually fought but uh this time i'm actually really ahead of schedule and i haven't lost any strength and uh considering how much weight i lost and uh weight's really good really ahead of hear. schedule yeah that's great no lo love to hear it um and then your corner you mentioned the coaches there santino defranco eddie Cha. i imagine they'll be in your corner who, who's going to be in the cages with you that night um 
I'm bringing Santino DeFranco, Eddie Cha, and my brother Christian Natividad. Okay, that's awesome, man. And uh, how's how's this fight playing out? I mean, this has got fight of the night written all over it. Yes, I agree. Uh, fight of the night, just because I think he's going to try to push on, push the pace on me. Uh, he seems like he's got a lot of energy, and you know he doesn't tire out. I've never gotten tired in any of my fights, so I think what it'll be like a mat, a battle of wills and technique. And I think I have the better technique. You know, uh, with technique is the same. The stronger guy and who's or the stronger guy and uh, the better technique usually. Or I said that weird. Technique I know what you meant. Cardio, I know what you meant. But you can repeat it anyways. Yeah, I know exactly what you meant. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cardio, cardio will be the same. My technique, I think, will over permit over prevail him in the long That's run. Awesome. We were talking before we hopped on here about you know how busy you are with camp and all that. All that. When you get that little bit of downtime, what, what are you what are you getting up to? Are you getting in any Netflix or going for hikes? I know it's nice out in Arizona. What what do, what do you get up to for for downtime? Um, I don't do as much hikes as I used to. Um, in between all the training, the running, the strength conditioning, the uh, and by the way, like all I post on my Instagram is like strength and conditioning stuff. And uh, that's just because that's what I feel like gets views on the reels, but <laughs> it's true. I yeah. Do way more than that. You know? No, no, we figured as much. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, a little bit of Netflix. I watched this movie, the gray man with Ryan Gosling. Okay. Super cool. And uh, gotta check it out. again, uh, Chris Evans, uh, Captain America is in it, except he was a bad guy. So that tripped mm. me out a little bit. It was, it was a good movie, but uh, okay. a little bit of Netflix here and there. Watch a lot of anime. Um, Shoot. Um, everyone's telling me to get started on Chainsaw, man. I have no idea. Like, never. I mean, I've seen some of it. It looks interesting, but I've, mm. I don't know. I just haven't brought myself to. It takes me a minute to like warm up and start something. Um, I get it. You, you got it. Yeah. You got to <laughs> dedicate time to it and, you know, make, make time aside for it and stuff. I, I completely get it. But I'll tell you what we got to make time for, man. UFC Fight Night, November 19th. It's going to be a great card. Uh, Kevin, thanks so much for doing this. If there's anyone you'd like to thank, any sponsors, any social media you want to plug, I'll give you the last word. Well, um, the people that have supported me since day one, uh, like Hawaiian Fight Gear, my uh, coach Paul back in Hawaii um, at 86 Jiu Jitsu. Um, with them, I wouldn't have even like. I don't even know where I would have been if they didn't, if they weren't there to support me and to help me. And uh, right now, on this journey, like since I became pro, um, blacksmith, uh, blacksmith MMA, uh, same company as Money Cubes. Uh, I, I, I can't say too much on what they're doing, but look look out for them because they're going to be a big thing in the future, and. Um, Amanda Warfield with a, a Warfield hair bar. Like they do all my haircuts and give me the classic war mullet that I'm going to have next weekend. Yeah. <laughs>